Well, hello there, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Darkspawn, naturally, and welcome. Welcome to the playground. This is going to be the first video I do about uh, trap and guard combos. I've got six of them in total to show you with a little bit of knowledge about layouts as well to try and just get the maximum value out of these setups. And I've got one bonus mention for you, which isn't necessarily a combination, but a really great mechanic that I feel deserves a bit more attention than it's currently getting. Right, so uh, yeah, I've made a big old play button, and uh, this is where the magic happens. This is where all the testing of the traps, all the information, all the data comes from. It comes from here and the uh, Meet Your Make Community Discord combination. I've got a few things prepared, and I uh, would like using a few of the more rarer mods as you'll see in a moment uh, i think for now we'll start with the section here on the right indicated by the red lux which uses bloodlust guards bloodlust essentially allows warmongers or any guard with bloodlust to rush into battle when they hear another guard in combat now this works is that it requires one guard that is not already triggered by a bloodlust effect. So uh, for example, if I had this enforcer within range of another guard, and that guard activates, this one activates by bloodlust, it does not chain trigger to guards out of range of the initial point of combat. So only the guards in range of the initial combat trigger not the bloodlust trigger and then triggers of bloodlust on top of that guard will rush into combat as the mod states so uh it's just a very basic setup you know depending on how long you want a delay in between the first guard activating and the first bloodlust guard rushing into battle you can give it a short path and, you know, move a guard into a hollow cube. This is a combination that I really like to do. I really like to put a warmonger, especially, inside a hollow cube to try and hide them and disguise them. They do still make quite a bit of noise when inside of these blocks. So uh, do keep that in mind that if they're not near other naturally occurring bedrock, as you can see here below, there are many good places to hide them. But if they're not near them and they're in between bunch of blocks that have a contrast in color towards bedrock they do kind of stick out like a sore thumb and uh, i'll show you how the mod works in a moment i'm going to anger this poor little enforcer and uh, the guards with bloodlust will run towards me the moment i enter combat i've entered combat and the guards with valid pathing to me immediately rush to me as the bloodless mod indicates they will now when i enter the initial combat with the guard like this enforcer and i move out of sight from any other guard and i'm no longer in combat with any guard i can actually showcase that for you how it works is that it creates kind of like a phantom where it uses my last known position As you can see, the second guard that ran towards me does not know where I am. It does not have line of sight of me. And you see there, it just uh, de -aggroed. They went to the point where the combat was triggered. And, you know, upon finding that I was no longer there, they return back to their initial points until they hear another guard in combat. So, yeah, if uh, the way it works is, yeah, again, as I said before, I trigger combat, it creates like a phantom. I don't know if anybody has played Assassin's Creed before, but uh, when you're detected and your last point of detection, it makes like this little ghost image of you. Imagine it kind of being like that. <laughs> He's on some kind of magical journey. <laughs> Alright. Bloodlust, uh, have a guard come from behind. This is especially effective 
when you have lots of tight corridors, you have guards that aggro, but do make sure that you know the weakness of this mod is indeed the initial guard that triggers combat. This enforcer or any guard that you have at the front facing the player that can see the raider moving towards them. If that guard dies by getting shot out of range, for example, and without actually entering combat, like so, uh, it actually entered combat a moment. I think it was because I shot the plasma sentinel but as you, if, if i truly had entered combat then the warmonger here on the left would not remain where it was it would run around the l-shaped blocks and come at me oops i <laughs> forgot i was out of ammo so yeah that's pretty much how the bloodlust setup works it's great for you know not having guards on a timer a lot of people will wait uh, are warmongers coming or they're not coming They'll, it'll throw their timing off there and it'll help you get a few little extra kills with the warmongers i find them great because i do not like guards that are on a, are on a predetermined timer walking into bases and uh, yeah this just makes them always be at their maximum effectiveness without really costing too much of a mod so yeah, that'll be it for the first example, and now let's move on to the second one. The second example I have here is a Minecraft cake. No, it is a bomb ejector setup that splits the bomb ejector downwards through two corrosive hollow cubes that both have splatter. Now, this bomb ejector on the top has chaos bombs, and it has a slant directly beneath it one block spacing and then a slant and then two ramps on either side the idea is that some of these bombs go straight through down and you know bounce around below however the path may look down on the bottom and those that do not bounce through the gap here hit the left and right side of this block on the corner bounce on the slant bounce upwards and then with momentum go through the corrosive cubes trigger splatter Though they don't really need to have splatter, it's just some flavor I like to put on. I, I like using bots that people don't normally use. And uh, after bouncing upwards on the top slant, they go down and then they hit really far away from where the bombs would normally drop. So if this had chaos, the bombs would go straight down, they would bounce straight up, and they would hit like two, two blocks away from where they would normally hit. And, uh, and by adding these slants and the corrosives it hides exactly where the bombs are going to hit and it hides it, what the intention of the hallway or setup is that we're kind of going for there we go should probably test it from there and get rid of the plasma signal first. As you can see, the bombs do drop on the sides of the corrosive cubes, though with chaos it's a little inconsistent um, in that the bombs do not always bounce on the correct spots to go out of the corrosives and hit further down the corridor a bomb hitting down the corridor with that splitter and the slant there with chaos would effectively have a maximum range of up to here on both sides so that after the corrosive would be three blocks which is three four five blocks down a corridor which is a massive range to have on both ends but if we remove chaos on it, even with the same setup, it should still remain quite effective. I think it'll just be one block less on either side. It'll be more consistent with where the bombs drop, and I think 
the bombs will tend to drop more towards one side which is going to be the side that has the back and the bottom of the slanted block that was put here in the middle so that side over there the side that i'm shooting towards that has the back side and the bottom side of the slant will have more consistency yeah so this bomb dropped down and it bounced towards this end and most of the bombs that you know went out went either straight down or hit the slant right above me and went through this corrosive cube but if you want them to split in both directions i recommend giving them chaos it's not as consistent as you know the normal bombs but it does give you a 50 50 that it'll spread towards both ends actually with most of them most of the bombs uh, dropping straight down the middle and i think two or three dropping to either the left or the right combined just one final example before we go see there one had dropped through the top right and would have reached another extra three blocks do that one more time just get a better feel for the consistency of it one went through that corrosive and i think one hopped right here on top so maybe it's more like it's got a 33 to a 40 percent chance of going towards both sides but it has a really high chance of going towards the one side definitely In this case, it went both towards the left and the right. So you can hear when the bombs go through the corrosives. So it is very inconsistent in compared to the normal bombs, but it does have a much greater potential range. A very good trap for long hallways, where you have something on the other end of the hallway that sets up kind of a choke point so if you know five blocks away over here the raider is coming in from the opposite end they come this way they trigger the bomb ejector and obviously if you this was your side that has the choke point you would take the slant and you would turn the slant towards the opposite end so that the more consistent side with the back and the bottom is facing towards where the choke is and uh you would then Put some pistons here you know something to just slow them down so that the bombs that are all consistently heading in this direction would take care of them yeah very effective very underutilized seeing people actually use more than one block to split the bombs but having slants on the sides to try and you know force them to get a much larger distance on the bounces and the bomb spreading and that's for the second example. Let's move on to the third one. Now, right, the third example I have for you today is one that I came up with during the alpha, but only really tested and implemented in the beta. This uses a octagon pattern, as I will show you here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like a warped, elongated octagon that covers a lot of overlapping angles at least you know two ball shots intersecting at any one point except the blocks on the far ends now these all have there's a variant of these that i like to use i even at one point tried stringing two of these octagon shape together um and what i found is, is if you make these two which are at the moment iron claws if you were to make them bolt shots they would simply shoot straight if they lose sight of the player or the player moves one and a half blocks away from where the bolts can track i'll showcase this in a moment um, then they'll lose sight and they'll simply shoot straight and in shooting straight they destroy both the bolt shot on the opposite end and the incinerator so if you're going to use more than one of these directly after one another use iron claws at the back 
yeah, the idea behind this room, this combination of traps, is that they are corrosive cubes with opaque. They do not allow you to see to the left and the right. The moment you move forward, both of the hollow cubes on the sides trigger, and there are double down hunter bolt shots on both ends. And uh, whichever way you want to make this corridor, the hunter bolt shots can track up to one and a half blocks away. In this case, uh, one block would be roughly about the middle of this, and a half block would be here. So they would be able to track and shoot up until the block that I am right here. So depending on how you use this information, um, hunter bolt shots can become extremely deadly, but do note that once they lose sight, direct sight of the player, the raider, they cannot continue to track and will just end up going straight in whichever direction they were going before. And uh, yeah, it, it makes very good use of having corners like this where there's a lot of false safety. If you were to, for example, have a corner which looked something like this. If you're coming down the ramp from the inside, let's say Harvey spawns on this gray block here at the front, you come down to the side and the corner looks something like this, and there is a bolt shot over here. That bolt shot, if you were to aggro it, that bolt shot, if you were to aggro it right here, would be able to track you all the way to this corner, all the way to this corner, and up these stairs up until this block that i'm standing on right now it would have crazy coverage of one two three four five six seven eight blocks much more than it would have under normal circumstances and be quite quite more deadly yeah it'll be much more deadly It'll be much 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 more deadly and in you know using the same concept you can use them to shoot through corrosive cubes and make all of the area behind the corrosives that much more deadly now i like putting corrosives beneath them and these light colored blocks you can take and you can actually substitute these for hollow cubes if you want and add traps on the bottom though it's not very consistent method of killing them. I would rather put them beneath the bolt shots on the front over here, where players are more likely to, you know, use their bolts and try and retrieve them from. Um, if you were to use a second one of these octagon shapes as well. I do remember that these types of long corridors with corrosives on the bottom are very susceptible to speed running. So at the end of the corner, add a few pistons, um, add, a, add a block at the end with an incinerator. Obviously leave path for Harvey and put some pistons in front of your incinerator with different timings on, but uh, have something like that and have a second corridor on the side of it, for example, going around the edge that has another incinerator pointing in. Anything you can do to slow the raider so that the bolt shots from behind or the iron claws from behind can kill the player are very, very important. This, These two iron claws use the same kind of idea as one of the next examples I'll be showing you in which the two incinerators on the sides activate preferably you want to give them dragon breath so they have full coverage of the five block spacing in between them um, but yeah if, if someone rushes the incinerators activate and then the iron claws grab them from behind and pull them back into the incinerators effectively killing them with a hazard they thought they had already passed because fire does not destroy iron claws yeah, that's it for the second example. This is extremely, extremely great against slow players. And if you have a really good speed run trap at the end using well-timed pistons, it becomes 20 to 30 times more deadly. Well, let's head on to the next one then, shall we?
All right, for the next example, um, it'll kind of build upon the iron claw incinerator combination that I spoke about earlier and, you know, explain it in a little bit more detail, how to use it effectively and how to use it well. Um, and we'll also, with the second part of this example and combination, focus more upon stopping speedrunning. This is effectively a speedrun trap combination of incinerators and pistons and uh, we'll show you how to get optimal timing for your pistons and incinerators um, just to explain the concept about the iron claws and the incinerators a bit better like normally if you wanted a incinerator pointing at an iron claw and you don't want it to be too easily destroyable by the player you do something weird like this where if the iron claw hits them, this little two jets, three jets of flame kind of shoot through the bottom and just barely hit the player, do one damage, the player dies. But it's not very consistent and it doesn't work well. In fact, it kind of sucks. It's a waste of capacity. And you don't need to have a trap that activates once the player's already grabbed and yanked all the way to the actual claw trap itself. What you need to stop a speedrunner is a trap that if you were to run through it, grabs them from behind and grabs them into hazards that are already activated. In this case, incinerators. Fire is instant death and I believe it is a three or four second long activation where there's just a jet of flame. I believe it's four seconds that is active and is a is death it's a corridor of death fire and you know fire does not destroy iron claw traps so if you were to give your iron claw a quick launch for example it would almost instantly as soon as it fires snap straight onto the target stop them in their tracks for a second or half a second actually to be precise and then yank them back after stopping them into the fire that is already instant death all right as long as you have a great setup further ahead along you know whatever corridor you have whatever method you're trying to use this with as long as whatever's in front can slow them long enough for about half a second the iron claw trap should hit them before they go out of max range and yank them back into the fire let's give it a test shall we now I've already set up pistons on a really strange and weird timer. All right, here we are, we're back. Right, in that case, the setup I have is actually like one block, two blocks too far away from the Iron Claw and hit me on max range. All right, just to showcase how the Iron Claw Trap will hit you from behind. This trap is actually one block too far away. It should be one block closer. Um, if you can, make it one block closer. Or if you can take your hazards, in this case the pistons, and move them one block closer, that would also work. Um, but if you're too slow, you get grabbed. And you die to fire. Another really interesting thing that I'm not seeing a lot of people actually use is the fact that these napalm fire like remnants on slanted blocks can kill you if you're standing within half a block of them. So right there. Yeah, I cannot touch this block even though I'm half a block away from where the fire is actually on the block. It kills me. I think it may have a, a little to do with the slant, and that the slant doesn't correctly, you know, tell the fire to stop being on this corner, or maybe it just doesn't visually show that it's reaching all the way 
to the bottom where I'm standing. Whoops. There you go. Right, so uh, the rest of this example uh, that has to do with the speedrun trap has a lot to do with efficient piston timing and the mods for them. For this example, I have a incinerator at the end of a long corridor with a dragon's breath that gives it a five block range as you can see here one two three four five and i have five pistons in this corridor one on the floor and i try to cycle them in like a counterclockwise motion so that it's more difficult for the raider or the speedrunner or whoever's doing it to be able to get through this section quickly because if they were all on the floor you could just look at the floor melee shoot melee shoot melee shoot or melee melee and you know it'd be very easy to see where the timing is where it's coming from so varying them does give a very slight addition to difficulty for these pistons i have the first piston as normal with no mods on it the second pistol with blockade piston with blockade the third piston with blockade and burning piston this is extremely important that the second one has blockade and the third one has burning piston and blockade if you're a speedrunner with a gun and a sword or two swords etc whichever way that you're doing the speed running you're gonna hit the first trap and the second trap and the second and third piston trap are both going to be extended at the same time. If the second one is extended, it kind of hides the burning piston mod on the third piston. So if you keep, if you touch the sides, it'll be completely red and you'll instantly die as if you were hit by the front of the piston. Um, so you're hitting the first one as a speedrunner, you're hitting the second one as a speedrunner, then your weapons are on cooldown and you're kind of expecting the third one to go up but it doesn't because it has blockade and it's got the exact same timing as the second death piston. You touch it walking forward to try and get more distance further away from the traps behind you. And in touching the side, you die to the burning, burning piston mod. Right, the third piston has blockade and unstable to kind of throw off the timing. And the fourth piston only has unstable, no other mods, not blockade, not burning piston. Um, this helps to try and catch, so if, if example, the raider was playing it a bit slow, maybe, or they're getting very used to the timing, this does throw them off quite a bit, and uh, it's great for catching bolts, like if the raider was standing there at the bottom of the ramp, they want to shoot towards the incinerator, they shoot the death piston, thinking that it's you know they're all going down there's a gap yes i can shoot the incinerator at the end killing it and when they shoot it the piston with unstable rolls great on its timing rng and it jumps up boom catches a bolt and the raider thinking that the incinerator is dead moves up a block or three realizes that oh no i missed it hit the piston and ends up dying to the incinerator so these unstable mods do work and uh, I will edit a clip in for this of the pistons working and how much the uptime in between the pistons active is and how easily you can see the incinerator at the end using the setup. Um, so yeah, the setup just again, just to like have it all in like one little bit so you don't have to skip back to the video to try and see what it is. First piston normal. Second piston blockade, third piston burning piston and blockade, fourth piston blockade and unstable, and the fifth piston just with unstable and incinerator with dragon breath. Yeah, here's the clip.
Right, moving on to the next example of a great card and trap combo. You can already see what I'm going for. Cannonbacks and Plasma Sentinels with Hunter Bolt Shots. Now, Hunter Bolt Shots have a, shall we say, unique characteristic where they can home in on their target with a lot of degrees of variation. They can home in on a target with roughly one and a half blocks of distance to any side. And I'll show this in a moment. I have a hunter bolt shot over here, which as you can see is one block lower than the block opposite me. I will grapple in from below and make sure that my center of mass is just above the middle of this block. Now, this is already, as we've established, one block higher, and this is one and a half blocks higher than the Hunter Bolt shot. So you can about say that consistently it shoots about one and a half blocks in any direction as long as the player does not exit the one and a half blocks range. So right here, this is one and a half blocks, roughly about the middle of this block. If the player exits the one and a half block range too slow, the bolts will home to them. But if, for example, they are extremely fast, these bolts do not home and instead simply just go straight. As you can see, right before the bolt shot actually fired, I was more than one and a half blocks away from the line of sight of the bolt shot, which is that whole line of blocks, and the bolts did not home towards me. So, keeping that in mind, we can effectively place a hunter bolt shot one block lower than the cannon bags and the sentinels, this gives them much more of a range since players aren't really going to be grappling up, killing the cannon back and then grappling even further up to a roof which is presumably already right above the cannon back. Or a wall that is directly to the right of the cannon back, for example. So putting them one block further down greatly increases their effectiveness. And if you combine Eagle Eye, Plasma Cloud, and Cannonbacks that can shoot down a slanted block, like the one shown here on the bottom, the bombs from the Cannonback hit the last known area that the player was in, i.e. this top of the slanted block, and it rolls down the slope hits the slanted wall on the side and rolls further down and can kill the player up until the bottom of this gray block. So always give your cannonbacks enough line of sight that they shoot down a slanted block. If the bombs that the cannonbacks shoot hit the player directly, they will either stop or if the player was moving forward, the bomb from the cannonback will obtain the player's momentum and effectively act like a sticky bomb. While the plasma sentinel has its own AOE, the AOE hits at the front, they see the red from the plasma cloud or the plasma sentinel, it hits, it makes a red cloud, they can't really see the bomb from the cannonback coming through, the bomb from the cannonback hits the side of this wall or the bottom of this ramp or the top of the ramp and it rolls down, it hits the slanted wall, they think they're safe and it reaches the top or the middle of this block and explodes right on top of them. So it's great to mess with their vision, it's great to zone them so they don't go through the radiation from the Plasma Sentinel. And honestly, it's, it's such a great combo because it also removes the need for placing a grapplable safe block that Cannonbacks need to stand on because Cannonbacks can stand on Sentinels.
So in testing this, if I was to try and just immediately grapple towards here. Oh, I think I think I actually got the bug here where bolts can uh, if it close to max range or the block where it reaches max range um, can kind of go through players or like circle around players as if the players aren't really there. Yeah, I think I actually just got the bug. But um, in keeping with the block not, you know, being solid, if the block that the cannon back is standing on can shoot at me, I'll be more... I'll be more reluctant to try and grapple towards it straight. As you've seen, I grappled like this towards it and used my second double jump and a grapple towards it to avoid it. But if they were just to grapple towards it, the sentinel will shoot them in the face and they'll die. This does add an extra layer of deadliness while, you know, giving the plasma sentinel a lot of open space towards the bottom that it can see. And generally, you know, using this kind of setup in open rooms is extremely deadly, especially when coupled with incinerators on the top, facing uh, the bottom here as you enter, cutting off their escape as soon as they enter the room, or hunter bolt shots hitting them and tracking them from behind, or even iron claws hitting them and tracking them from the top or behind. Yeah, that's for this example. Let's uh, head on to the... Last two, shall we? Right, so the last example I have for you is... Well, that's something that I've not seen anyone else use ever. I've not seen a single base use this, but putting a hollow cube on the floor with a chaos bomb ejector beneath it and a quarter pyramid block above it so the bombs kind of like spout out of the floor and hit this quarter pyramid with two slanted sides here on the left is one and here on the right is one and those two sides kind of force the bomb in a specific direction so if you wanted to have the bombs go towards the opposite corner for example you would put the bomb uh, you would put the block like so so that when the bombs go up they hit these two sides and not sides facing the way that I am right now and that I was facing previously so the bombs preferentially bounce towards these and go towards that direction but yeah depending on how you wanted them to go in what which corner which one of the four directions they can either go towards the back right back left the front left or the front right depending on how you're feeling on any particular day and uh, where your choke point is they can be extremely extremely deadly so a hollow cube with picture perfect just on the floor you know next to some natural occurring bedrock so that they don't expect too much um, shenanigans from you as the boulder into a floor bomb ejector facing directly upwards it has gotten me quite a few kills especially especially if you use a second hollow um, somewhere where they'll panic so for example if the way out is towards the bolt that I've just fired on the opposite corner they move in they don't look beneath them they trigger this hollow with a bomb ejector they panic they jump out into the next bomb ejector and they kind of chain into one another yeah let's see how it functions kind of forgot about that trap not gonna lie <laughs> So as you can see, it's got quite a decent spread, um, and with chaos, some of the bombs do sometimes hit the top quarter slant, though if you'd want at maximum efficiency, I would move this one block down to guarantee any bouncing from them. Uh, depending on which one of the, I think, eight bombs actually gets the most momentum. Usually it's the ones around the edges. Some of them can bounce, but it's not too consistent. And chaos bombs are extremely consistent in their inconsistency. Let's give it another go. 
you can see there one block hit the side on top on the right and one hit the side on top on the left they didn't have a lot of momentum when they hit this block so they didn't really bounce too much but it does kind of help to corral the bombs in a certain direction now if we were for example to use the bombs like this in a more open focused room where you want the player to move over you know this narrow space instead of having the block above the fact that this is low does kind of become a dead giveaway that there is a hollow on the bottom but not in all cases so have something that either forces them very quickly into this corridor and triggers this to help give them pressure and to not realize what what's actually going on or move this one block higher to try and disguise it a bit better so yeah with the block being one space lower the bounces do give about an extra half a block of range but the spread still remains the same it spreads around the whole room in roughly a five a three by five range around the bomb ejector so yeah, it's got quite a bit of range it's got quite a bit of bounce and it is plenty plenty deadly i think for now that'll be it for that example and let's uh let's move on to the bonus example shall we this unassuming tube which contains nothing more than a single bolt shot. This bolt shot is disgusting and it uses the power of gravity. Let's say, for example, you have a wall, a wall that directly opposite me has a tomb on it, the tomb being represented by the gears here on the bottom. And you mark this out for your player that this tomb had or this long tube that you've made out of blocks does have a tomb in it they hear the tomb they go to the top and they dare to peek over the edge downwards see the bolt shot and decide to move backwards these bolts go straight up into the air and come straight back down hitting on every part of the square so i'll test that again and in testing i will dodge the first bolts going upwards but i will not dodge the bolts coming down so yeah there it goes You're like ha ah, okay it missed me let's get the tomb you drop you shoot you get the tomb and you know on your way out for example you get hit from above now obviously if you want to make this work make a longer tube please these bolt shots shoot extremely far into the air and it takes does take quite a bit of time to come back down so i would suggest a tube that is one and a half times extra this length so or maybe even twice this length it is insanely funny to see people die to this kind of trap yeah i hope the uh, video has been informative and uh, yeah stay safe until the next time we meet i'll see you then bye bye